All right, so I got a message today, and it uh, was somebody who wanted to know how I created the motion blur effect that you see on uh, Nick Darkus here in the bottom right hand corner. I did a quick YouTube search to try to find something that was close to how I do it, wasn't having much luck. So I just decided I'm going to jump in here and do a very quick run through of this just so you see the idea or the concept of how you uh, get this type of look. Um, I may not be as meticulous as I was uh, when I made this original one, but uh, I said it was going to be quick, so let's jump right into it. Um, assuming you already have your image uh, extracted, I have it pulled up here, I'm going to split the window and I'm just going to drag it into the document. Now you can do this effect before or after. Um, I like to do it in the document just so that I can see uh, how it's going to look. So I've got uh, I've got my subject dropped in here. A few things I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the original one so that we can't see it. Um, so now we have uh, our subject dropped in here. The very first thing I want to do is convert it to a smart object. Uh, keeping it a, making it a smart object will make sure that what we are doing um, is not only not destructive um, to the image quality as we scale this thing up and down, um, but also as we add effects to it, um, if we decide we want more or less, uh, we can go in and make those changes. Um, so I, now that it is a smart object, I'm going to go ahead and scale it down and get it generally where in the same position that it was. I, don't recall how big or where it was located, but I'll put it where I think it looks good. So now that we have our, uh, our subject scaled and positioned how we want it, let's go ahead and start on the blur effect. So the first thing I want to do is duplicate this uh, layer here. Um, a few ways you can do that. I hit Command J on a Mac. You can always right click and duplicate. Um, another option on the Mac is to hold down Option, click and drag up, let go, and you have a new layer. Let's get rid of this one. So now that we have two layers that we're working with, this top one is the one that we want to apply the blur effect to. So we're going to go up to our filter tab, come down to blur, and we want to select motion blur. Now you can see it's already um, set to a distance of 1250 and an angle of 9. But if you need to adjust your angle, let's say you start out with something like this, you can probably, first thing you want to do is really boost this up so that you can see the direction easily. And now you can move it to the direction that your subject should be moving. In this case, left to right, east, west something like that. Now you can play with the distance or the uh, strength of the blur, I guess you would say. The good thing is you can always go back and, and adjust it later. So let's just roll with, we'll say a thousand. I'm going to commit it. So now we have our blur effect. Um, next we want to add a layer mask. So I'm just going to come down here, click on that, add the layer mask. Control or Command I to invert that layer mask, and this is going to make everything not visible. So now I'm going to want to see this a little better. So I'm going to zoom in, position it where I can see it better. With our mask selected, I'm going to use a brush. I want white to reveal, and I want to make sure that I'm working with a soft round brush. So hardness at zero, and I can use my left and right bracket key to adjust the size of my brush. Now you can play with the opacity. Maybe you don't want to work with 100%. Maybe we'll work with something closer to 40, in this case 39. And I think I'm going to make my brush size a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to start to paint in where I want the blur to show. So we can have it coming off of his hands and his arm here. And if you decide you paint in too much, you can always switch to white. I'm going to hit the edge of his helmet, maybe make it a little smaller here. 
get some blur on the helmet coming off maybe just a little little bit on the football his fingertips I'm gonna go all along the left side here really probably want to get a lot of it so I'll make it a bigger brush and I'm just gonna paint in here come off of his shoe get quite a bit quite a bit there and my strokes are kind of going in the general direction I think I've been kind of going a little more upward but the same direction as the blur is what you want and it'll reveal more of that blur let's see trying to hit just the edge of his leg here you'll get better at this the more you do it you'll get a feel for it a little bit on the leg a little bit on the arm coming off here maybe a little on the hand one more here now I did that very fast so you might take your time with a little bit more we can open up this and play with the strength and maybe a little less strength make it a little more visible right maybe yeah, maybe somewhere in there all right so now I've got my blur on there um, I did have some ground shadows I might as well go ahead and demonstrate that real quick I'm gonna fly through this so just keep that in mind uh, you may take your time make it a little be a little more meticulous with it but anyways I've created a new layer underneath my subject image and all I'm gonna do is use a, a, a round brush I'm going to bring my opacity up, I'm going to use black, and I'm going to just make a little, little dot like that. Now I'm working on this layer. This first one is just going to be kind of a contact shadow. So I'm going to hold down shift and click one of these side anchor points to kind of make it a little skinnier. I'm going to let go of shift, make it a little bigger. I'm going to try to place it right under his toe. Let's see, maybe a little bit bigger, a little narrower, a little taller, a little bigger. You just got to play with it. Let me use my arrow key, maybe. Something like that. Again, I'm zooming through this. I'm going to make another layer, and I'm going to make another little dot to work with. Again, softness. Uh, all the way down okay so I'm gonna hold down shift click on the side to narrow this thing I'm gonna let go of shift use the corner to make it bigger I'm gonna try to put it in place how big do I want it about like that and I want to stretch it out so hold shift again and you can work with the sides here let go of shift maybe make it a little bigger I'm just going to commit that. Now I want to bring the opacity down on this one because this is just to kind of blend in with that contact shadow. Maybe something like that. Let's add one more with the brush tool. And this one's going to be even bigger. First thing is to narrow it. Now to make it much bigger. it even narrower than that stretch this thing out whoa it jumped on me that's okay holding down shift how narrow do I want this Hold down shift again now this is going to be a little more out in front of him I'm going to make it a little bigger Okay, now this one I'm going to bring down the opacity quite a bit. Maybe something like that. Just to get the idea that, you know, all of this part of his body that is leaning forward and is much further from the ground is casting a little bit of a shadow, so I'm going to make it a little softer still. I'm sure this will look way different than the first one. 
And that is it. So we can group this up, turn it off. It probably looks a lot worse than the first one. Eh, not too much different. I made them a little bigger. But anyways, that is how I created this blur effect with a ground shadow. Um, again, I zipped through that very quick, but hopefully that answers your question. And anybody else that's wondering the same, hopefully that helps you too.